Very pleasant. Good night. Good evening, brothers and sisters of the United National Congress family. Honorable political leader, Mrs. Kamala Pasad Bisessa, members of the National Executive, colleagues of the House of Representatives and the Senate, councillors, aldermen, constituency executive officials, activists, supporters, and well-wishers. Before I get into the substance of my presentation this evening, I want to make a quick mention to what the finance minister did on Wednesday. Imbert presented on Wednesday a position of honesty that I felt was missing in his conversations for the last six years. There was a big deception by the Minister of Finance for the last five years on how the PNM stabilized the economy. This week, Imbert is now telling the country that the economy is in crisis. He has reached to the point where the truth is all he has left. I suspect in the media review that is coming shortly, there will be nothing more than a pulpit sermon clearing the path for the harsh reality that lies ahead. All the red flags that our economy was in danger was there long before COVID-19. COVID-19 did not crash our economy. Let's get that clear. The PNM crashed our economy. We are not suffering from COVID-19. We are suffering from the PNM. I challenge anyone to identify one single achievement that this government has made in changing the fortunes of Trinidad and Tobago. The six pillars touted as the economic game changers all collapsed, crumbled due to incompetence, dishonesty, a lack of transparency, and downright dotishness on the part of the Prime Minister and his failed Minister of Finance. Imbert's mantra has always been borrow, tax, and deceive. Six years, six years have gone. $373 billion later, at the end of this fiscal year, the PNM will throw Trinidad and Tobago 50 years into the past. Ladies and gentlemen, today would have been Carnival Monday. And while the event of Carnival has been scrapped, the PNM government is continuing to play mass with the people of Trinidad and Tobago. We are meeting at a time when the crisis affecting the working masses and small business community is getting worse, and more and more people are heading into poverty and hardship. There is growing despair, pain, frustration throughout the country. Today, brothers and sisters, the cost of living is climbing at an astronomical rate. Unemployment is at its worst level since the 1980s, and a lack of foreign exchange and other issues are strangling small business. Bank charges are quietly going up, and people are losing their homes. The cost of steel products has almost doubled in a couple months. Lumber prices are higher, and the government is allowing virtual monopolies in cement, red clay blocks, chemicals, and other building materials. All that means, brothers and sisters, is that you have to pay more to build a house or if you want to add to your current home or to put up your little business. It also means that mortgages are going to escalate this year. You have to dig much deeper into your pockets and the costs will continue to rise. While all this is happening, brothers and sisters, thousands of workers have lost their jobs. A large number of businesses have had to close their doors permanently, not temporarily. The central bank just a couple of weeks ago admitted that there are more layoffs, retrenchments, and pay cuts, and fewer advertisements for jobs. The central bank also said that economic activities are contracting and that several businesses closed and others reduced their operations. This is not the UNC that's saying this, eh? This is the central bank. That, brothers and sisters, is a snapshot of Trinidad and Tobago, while the Keith Rowley government is playing all mass with the lives of workers and small business owners. The real road match today is that this is the worst of times, and that the PNM does not have a clue how to steer us out of this dreadful mess 
that they have made on their own. The Minister of Finance, Carl Membert, finally admitted that the country is in deep financial crisis. But in that contribution, he did not offer one single solution, not one. He just played big mass and old mass with some high sounding economic terms. The PNM has still not made a single stride in diversifying our economy, even though the energy sector is getting weaker and weaker. After almost six years, they have still not been able to attract a single major investor to Trinidad and Tobago. Who wants to invest in a country where it takes you 254 days to receive a construction permit, 61 days to get Tiantec to connect you, two and a half years to resolve legal insolvency issues. It takes three and a half years to enforce contracts, 77 days to register property. This is governance under the People's National Movement. We are still ranked 105th out of 190 countries on the ease of doing business. So foreign corporations are bypassing Trinidad and Tobago left and right. Nobody wants to land in Trinidad and Tobago and invest their money. And the local, in the local business environment, our commercial banks are flushed with between 11 and $13 billion in cash that nobody wants to use to invest in their business. Why? Because they lack confidence in our economy, which is led by this PNM government. Businesses and citizens rather keep their money in the bank account and earn quarter percent interest rather than risk a business opportunity in the local environment. Our investment climate, brothers and sisters, is one big old mass ban. Brothers and sisters, we in the U UNC, under the leadership of Kamala Prasad Bisesa, has been continuously saying that the PNM is clueless. They are a clueless administration in the management of this country. Let's look at what has happened to small business in this country. SMEs account for about 85% of all local businesses. And at the peak, during our tenureship of the People's Partnership Government, it employed over 250,000 workers. These workers are the mainstay of many families and communities throughout Trinidad and Tobago. But the government closed down several of our SMEs because of the COVID-19 protocol, but they permitted large businesses to continue their operations. Some of these large businesses quietly expanded and moved into the trade and services that were provided by these small operators. In the meantime, the small operator had to pay his rent, utility bills, pay workers, and meet his bank's charges. It is not surprising, brothers and sisters, that many of them were forced to close down, send home workers, all because we have a heartless administration that does not care about the working poor and the middle class in this country. The government did make some soft loans available, but that did nothing to impede the condition of our small business environment. Progressive governments all around the world, brothers and sisters, they introduced extensive stimulus packages for their SMEs. They provided technical support and developed responses specific to each sector. They offered rapid access to credit facilities, tax deferrals, and provided other crucial resources and guarantees. The various forms of assistance in those countries were fast-tracked and were easy to obtain. Experts were assigned to help SMEs. Those governments, brothers and sisters, made small business a national priority. They appreciate that SMEs are the backbone of their economy and the well-being of their people. They realize that this issue is urgent and critical. In Trinidad and Tobago, the government still owes $6 billion in VAT to the business community. The government has refused to provide an equitable allocation of foreign exchange to small business. As a result, the lifeblood of our local business community is being drained at the hand of an incompetent and uncaring government. 
the government is literally playing jab-jab with the small business sector. Let us now look briefly at what's happening with steel prices. Because of developments in the international market, prices have almost doubled over the last few months. We in the UNC have urged the government to hold urgent discussions with local stakeholders to seek a solution. That is what national governance is about. That is what this country experienced under the People's Partnership, under the leadership of Kamala Prasad Bisesa. For example, the government could waive or lower applicable taxes and tariffs. The men and women in the fabricating, hardware, construction sectors would have other creative solutions that can be proposed to the government to deal with this issue. But the PNM doesn't care that it would cost you more to build a home or to add a room or a bathroom or a toilet and that your mortgage will go up. HDC homes for the low income earners, those to the construction and prices of those are going to go up as well. So brothers and sisters, expect another crisis in the construction sector, in the real estate market and in hardware sales, all because of an inept and hard-hearted administration. I also want to alert you to the monopolies that are developing in several sectors. And that means that you, the consumer, would have to pay more because there is only a single source of supply. Again, the PNM is playing mass while this undesirable state of affairs is taking place. My brothers and sisters, I want to turn to another matter that is causing a lot of anxiety and anguish to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, mortgage payments. Many countries have provided relief operations and protection with respect to mortgages to homeowners who are having financial difficulties as a result of the pandemic. Those governments have instructed banks to pause mortgage payments for a certain period for those who cannot afford to pay at this time. The banks have also been asked to seek lower payments and to halt foreclosures and evictions. The central banks in those countries have intervened on behalf of the small man. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, the government has simply thrown mortgage holders under the bus and to the wolves. Many people have already lost their homes. The others would become homeless over the next few months. Some banks have introduced new fees in order to retain their profits in a declining economy. For example, certain banks are asking for a 1% commitment fee for home mortgages, even though they would earn interest on these mortgages over the next 30 years. Some banks are charging a fee for anyone depositing above $10,000. That is the cold reality of life under this jump and wave PNM. The PNM government has been insensitive and cruel to the people who have lost their jobs and those who have had to close their business. They simply do not care about the small man and the micro and small business operator in this country. For example, there was a promise made to the bar owners of $10 million support. Up to most recently, the Bar Owners Association of Trinidad and Tobago has highlighted they haven't seen that money. There has been no um, conversation with the association on how this uh, support is going to come to them. And ladies and gentlemen, the forex crisis is something that is killing this country. We, when we look at the closure of the Petrotrade refinery and Point Lisa's industrial estate, those two areas were the largest earners of forex in our country. The PNM has effectively destroyed both of them. The Prime Minister's mishandling of the gas contracts tightened the news around the necks of our downstream operators. This is the first time in the history that NGC has declared a loss. Now, when you look at the importance of foreign exchange and how important it is to small and micro enterprises, it means that it is something to be alerted about. And if immediate action is not taken, we will end up in serious problems. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to stay strong behind the banner of the rising sun to spread our message of prosperity, unity, and success. Long live the United National Congress. Long live our political leader, Kamala Prasad Visesa. Long live Trinidad and Tobago. 
I thank you.